Welcome to Hardware Benched. Last time we talked about Athlon 64 and its impact. This time we move on to the successor of the K8 architecture, K10 and the Phenoms. In 2006, Intel released the Core 2 series of CPUs, which absolutely blew AMD's current Athlon 64 away. Not only did the Core 2 Duo Conroe cores outperform the Athlon 64X2, Intel were also the first to release a quad-core CPU on the consumer market. Intel had come back from Pentium 4 with a die shrink and a new architecture that brought much more performance and once again allowed them to return to the top of performance. AMD was not ready with a competing product and weren't able to release one until fall 2007 with K10. And when they did, it was not very competitive. When the Phantom X4 launched in fall 2007, it had a TLP bug that could cause a race state in certain situations and thus a system lockup. That had not been caught before launch, although it was fixed through a BIOS fix. However, the BIOS fix cost up to 20% performance and it wasn't until the next year that they released a fixed version that did not have the bug. Along with the problems with the TLB bug at launch, the clock speed just wasn't there. The Xenon X4 9600, the top end CPU at launch, came at 2.3 GHz and couldn't be overclocked much further. Even the fixed X50 SKUs of AMD's Phantoms could not clock that high. I was only able to get my Phantom X4 9950 up from 2.6 GHz to 3.1 GHz at 1.55 volts. Pretty much the only thing that the Phantom X4 brought to the table was that it had 4 cores on one die, as opposed to Intel's Core 2 Quads that had 2 Core 2 Duo dies under one IHS. Other than that, its only real bit of competition was its price, being somewhat lower than Intel's. Now that we've learned the history of the CPU that arrived late and still wasn't ready for the party, let's see how bad it really is. I tested a Phantom X4 9600 and a Phantom X4 9950 to test the architecture both before and after the TLB bug. I also threw some Core 2 quads in there just to give an idea of, of relative performance. I tested the Phenoms on a Gigabyte GAMA UD4P with an AIO and 8 gigs of DDR2 800 MHz with two R9280s, which are the best GPUs I currently have. I've made every effort that I could to make sure that the CPU is the only bottleneck in this system. First of all, let's take a look at overclocking. It was fairly straightforward on my board. Raise multiplier and raise vCore as needed. Then raise Northbridge and hypertransport along with Northbridge voltage until they won't go further. Then raise RAM clock speed and RAM voltage and tighten timings. I would have pushed the base clock, however, I didn't have anything that wasn't able to hit its max speed through multiplier. I managed to reach 3.1 GHz at 1.55 volts vCore with DDR2 800MHz with tight timings on the 9950. However, when it comes to the Phenom X4 9600, it's basically garbage. I did not like anything above its stock voltages of 1.25 volts, and on that voltage it managed an entire 100MHz bump up to 2400MHz from 2300MHz. It was able to raise the north bridge and hypertransport though, and I was able to also tighten the RAM, which at least allowed it to suck slightly less. Now that we touched on overclocking, let's take a look at some subjective benchmarking to get a feel for these CPUs and how night and day they are. If I didn't know what they were, I would think that they were two different architectures. First, we have Healing Floor 2, which is supposed to be our freebie. However, when it comes to the Phenom 9600, it isn't. On the Phenom 9950, it was able to max out the game at 62 FPS, which is the max. On the Phantom 9600, it struggled to hit 30 FPS, even overclocked. Even the Athlon 64 was able to max this game out, so overall I would say the 9600's performance was very disappointing. Moving on to Overwatch, which is a bit more CPU intensive, we get more of the same. The Phantom X4 9600 has a hard time playing the game, and it's basically a slideshow. Once it is overclocked, that does help a little, and it's able to maintain around or above 30 FPS, and the game is relatively playable. However, on the 9950, Overwatch was plenty smooth and playable, especially overclocked at 3.1 GHz. When it comes to GTA 5, the 9600 has a very hard time playing this game at stock. It's hitchy, and if you can get up to speed, there are major issues loading textures. Once overclocked, it's not as bad. However, it's clearly just good enough for smooth gameplay, as the small load that recording with Radeon Read Live puts on it means that even with a recording bitrate of 1 megabits per second, there are issues loading textures and the game is hitchy. However, if I weren't recording, it would be able to keep up with textures just barely, with few hitches. On the 9950, it more than kept up with GTA 5. Even recording, I couldn't cause any kind of pop-in for textures. It was pretty smooth for a 10-year-old CPU. Finally, for the subjective test, we have Battlefield 1. The 9600 couldn't run it. Recording, even at the lowest bitrate of 1 megabits per second, caused an FPS of about 2. When it wasn't recording, it managed about 8 FPS, even overclocked. Well, the engine is coded well enough that with my experience from my days as a console peasant on PS3, I could play it even at 8 FPS. It just wasn't enough to make up for the steaming pile of garbage that is the Phenom X4 9600. 
With the 9950, it was a completely different story. I could run smooth enough frame rates at high teens and low 20s, and I even was able to successfully move to my preferred bolt-action rifle, which is just impossible to use at 8 FPS. Moving on to synthetic benchmarks, we have Cinebench. In the IPC test, with all chips at 1800 MHz, we see that while the K10 architecture does exhibit an increase in IPC from K8, as the Phantom X4 9950 scores slightly higher on average, However, the Phantom X4 9600 actually scores significantly lower than the Athlon 64, highlighting the loss in performance that was caused by the TLB bug fix. Moving to stock settings, we see a fairly linear scaling for 1 to 4 cores. At stock settings, the 9950 beats its competitor, the Core 2 Quad Q6600. However, while they are both clocked the same on the core, unfortunately my only LGA775 board were OEM machines, so I was unable to change the memory from the stock DDR2-667 up to 800 MHz to match the 9950, so your mileage may vary. In comparison to the Core 2 Quad Q9650, which comes clocked at 3 GHz once again with DDR2-667, the Phantom X4-9950 overclocked at 3.1 GHz with 800 MHz DDR2, with Titan Times comes just behind the Core 2 Quad 9650, which would lead me to say that the K10 architecture in its first iteration, Sans TLV bug, has 4 core IPC just behind Intel core architecture. With the Phenom X4 9600, which launched with the TLV bug, we see a completely different story. Clocked 200 MHz less than the Q6600, we see the, Q the 9600 overclocked achieve a score about two thirds the score of the Q6600. Stock is four core score at 2.3 gigahertz. It's just ahead of Athlon 64 overclocked at 3.5 gigahertz. Which considering that the Athlon 64 has only two cores, whereas the Phantom X4 has four, it really shows the feeling of K10 at launch due to the TLB bug and the immature silicon. Moving on to HyperPi, which is single threaded, I've increased the data set exponentially at a rate of roughly X squared. So you'd expect the curve for every CPU to be roughly parallel, which we do for the most part see. Interestingly enough, the fastest CPU in this benchmark was the Athlon 64 overclock, probably due to the high clock speed with fast RAM, followed by the Phenom 9950 with the Core 2 Quad Q9650 just behind it, and the two Phenom 9600 scores competing for last place. In the IPC test at 1800 MHz, we see again that the Phenom X4 9950 comes out just in front of the Athlon 64, with the Phenom 9600 well behind. Switching to a memory benchmark, MaxMem, we see the Core 2 Quads behind all the AMD CPUs, this is almost certainly entirely because I was unable to run them above DDR2-667, whereas all the AMD CPUs are running DDR2-800 MHz. So this won't necessarily be at all indicative of the performance of the Core 2 IMC. Within the AMD CPUs, we see that the Phenom X4-9950 has the strongest memory performance, probably due to its overall better CPU performance, but also improvements to the IMC over the Athlon 64, as even when the overclocked Athlon 64 has slightly faster memory at 880 MHz with similar timings, it only just beats the Phenom 9950 with stock 800MHz and loses by a large margin to 800MHz with tight timings on the 9950. When it comes to the multi mem score, we see similar results with the overclocked Phenom 9950 coming in first, with a near tie between the overclocked Athlon 64 and the stock 9950. Then the overclocked Phenom 9600 comes ahead of the stock Athlon 64, which is then a little ahead of the stock 9600. The overclocked 9600 likely pulls ahead of the Athlon 64, not only because of the Titan timings, but also because of the noticeable chipset overclock. Transitioning back to a CPU benchmark in MaxPy, we see a similar benchmark to HyperPy, except now it's multi-threaded. Starting with the IPC test, we actually see the order being 9950, 9600, and Athlon 64, which is interesting, as in most tests, when threads and gigahertz are the same, the Athlon 64 tends to have more IPC than the 9600. My best guess for the increase is due to improved IMC and slightly hypertransport and northward frequencies, as I did not lower those beyond stock values for the IPC test. Interestingly, while the data set increases exponentially, the performance seems to drop off linearly to the increase in data set. Moving on to thread scaling, we see relatively linear scaling, which is expected, as this is a proper multi-threaded benchmark. We also see AMD pull ahead of the Core 2 quads in this benchmark, which is interesting, but is likely due to increased memory bandwidth of 800 MHz versus 667, as most other reviews would show different performance between these CPUs. But we do see the 9600 overclocked to 2.4 GHz with overclocked memory and chipset, almost keeping up with the Q6600 at stock settings, with DDR2 667, which leads me to believe that this benchmark is not only affected by multi-threading and CPU core performance, but is heavily influenced by memory bandwidth as the Phenom X4 9600 should otherwise be far behind the Q6600. Next we have a currently popular real-world test, the Ryzen Blender test. On a single core IPC, we see the 9600 ahead of the Athlon 64, 
likely due to better memory bandwidth. Interestingly enough though, when we switch to the Core 2 multi-threaded IPC, the Athlete 64 wins by a decent margin, beating out even the Phenomex 49950, suggesting a potentially better multi-threaded implementation on the older architecture. Moving on to thread scaling, well, it looks on the graph as if we see diminishing returns of core scaling, even up to 4 cores it is actually linear. Moving up from 1 to 2 cores we see around a 50% increase in time on all 3 AMD CPUs. Going from 2 to 3 we see a 33% decrease, and from 3 to 4, 25% decrease, indicating near perfect scaling up to 4 cores in the Ryzen Blender benchmark. We also see a modest bump from overclocking, which is as expected. Moving on to the built-in compression benchmark in WinRAR, we see in the IPC test that the Athlon 64 comes ahead both in single-threaded and multi-threaded score, which is interesting as it suggests that the K8 architecture of Athlon 64 is generally better at compression than the K10 architecture of Phenom. Of course, the Phenom 9600 is still terrible. The TLB bug fix seems to seriously impact compression performance as the two-core score of the Phenom 9600 is well below the single-core score of either the Athlon 64 or the Phenom 9950. In the thread scaling test, we see generally linear scaling, and the Athlon 64 overclocked 3.5 GHz beats the 3-core score of the 9950 at stock. Interestingly, this benchmark seems to respond very well to overclocking, as the Phenom 9950 responds to being overclocked up to 3.1 GHz from 2.6 as if it gained a 5th core. We see this on all CPUs, interestingly, even going to 2.4 GHz from 2.3 GHz on the 9600. Although the Phenom 9600 is still terrible, as even with 4 cores overclocked, it is far below the performance of single thread stock of any of the other CPUs. It's been reported that the TLB bug fix cost as much as 30% performance in some cases. However, this is much, much more. In the IPC test, it is a decrease of 675% from the Athlon 64. However, with the stock frequency of 3 GHz on the Athlon 64 and 2.3 GHz on the 9600, we see a decrease of 878%, which is even more insane considering that that's 2 cores versus 4 cores. Even with the Phenom 9600 overclocked to 2.4 GHz with 4 cores, it is still 213% below the single core performance of the Athlon 64. Clearly, the TLB bug fix had a huge impact on compression performance. Next, we have some gaming benchmarks. In 3 d Mark Time Spy, unfortunately, we weren't able to complete the CPU test as we didn't have quite the right instructions on the CPU, so we only have a graphics score. We see that with a single R9 280, we are GPU limited as there's no difference in performance between the CPUs. However, when we move to dual GPUs, we see some differences, although even with two R9-280s, it's pretty close to graphics limited. Sadly, these are the best cards I have. Stock, the 9950 reaches a GPU limit as overclocked, it gains no real performance. Stock, the 9600 and the Athlon 64 are CPU bound. However, once overclocked, we are once again GPU limited. So overclocked, they will at least be able to not bottleneck the graphics score of this benchmark. In 3 Mark Fire Strike, we do see some more variants. In the graphics score, the 9600 is bottlenecking hard. Even overclocked and with dual GPUs, it scores lower than a single R9-280, which is otherwise not bottlenecked on either the Athlon 64 or the Phenom 9950. In the physics score, the 9600, however, beats the Athlon 64, as its 4 cores beat the 2 cores in this heavily multi-threaded section. In the combined scores, we see the Athlon 64 and the Phenom 9600 actually score similarly with the 9950 taking a lead by a noticeable margin. These three scores lead the overall score stack, with the Athlon 64 still taking the lead from the 9600 because of the massive graphic bottleneck on the 9600 on the graphic score. Next we have Ashes of the Singularity. In this benchmarking game, while well, all the CPU scores subpar on extreme settings and couldn't even run crazy settings due to a memory limitation of 8GB on the platform, the Phenom 9600 stock performs similar to the Athlon 64 at 3.5GHz, showing that while well, the game is heavily multi-threaded, it is also influenced a lot by IPC, and is also, which is also very important. The Phenom X4 9950 has an almost playable frame rate of the 20s. On all the CPUs, we see barely any, if at all, increase going from extreme to low, verifying that with this, these CPUs, it is 100% CPU limited. Moving on to Batman Arkham Origins, we see the Athlon 64 beat the 9600. However, the 9950 was far ahead. On all CPUs, we saw loss in performance going from 1 to 2 GPUs, which means this game is CPU limited, even at max settings. The Phenom 9600 scores roughly half as well as the Phenom 9950. Both the Athlon and the Phenom 9950 can maintain 60 FPS in this game, as long as PhysX is turned off, with the 9950 pushing slightly higher frame rate than the Athlon 64. However, with the Phenom 9600, you'll only get around 30 FPS. Moving on to Metro Last Light, we see that while it is mostly GPU limited, the 9600 scores behind the Athlon 64 again, and all of the CPUs benefited from overclocking. In both the Athlon 64 
and an i950, they also benefit from Crossfire, meaning that the game is also GPU bound. However, the 9600 lost performance from Crossfire, meaning that it is entirely CPU bottlenecked. Finally, we have Tomb Raider 2013. We see a game that is 100% GPU bound. All of the CPU scores similarly, and see an increase in performance going to Crossfire, with almost no increase with a CPU overclock. In conclusion, the K10 architecture at launch was seen as a failure, mainly due to the failure that the Theno 9600 was. However, once the silicon had been fixed and there was no TLB bug, we see that K10 was in fact a competitive architecture. Once those issues were ironed out, it became an actually decent product. While I would not recommend buying a 9600 for any more than an Athlon 64, that is, to be used as a Facebook slash productivity machine, however, I would value any of the X50 SKUs that have the TLB bug fixed as just as valuable as a Core 2 Quad. The 9950 can actually play games alright, especially overclocked. But in the end, it seems that the biggest thing that the first generation of Phenom brings is four cores on one die. Overall, K10 is a nice upgrade from Athlon 64 and a sign to better things to come. Next time, we'll look at optimization of K10 or K10.5 or Phenom 2. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, like it. If you want to see more of this, please subscribe. And if you have a question or want to see me test something differently, then comment below. And as always, have a nice day.